Managing a modern healthcare environment grows more complex as increasingly restrictive life safety requirements are imposed by authorities having jurisdiction, underwriters, and the Joint Commission. Among all of the life safety features in the environment of care, by far the most frustrating to manage are through penetrations made in smoke and fire barriers. This is partly because many people make openings, but few of these individuals are adequately trained for this work. It is difficult enough just making certain that all penetrations are being sealed as they are created, much less ensuring that they are being sealed properly and that old ones are gradually brought up to code. This videotape series is intended to provide continuing education as part of a comprehensive, competency-based Firestop installers training program. While the mechanics of installing Firestop materials are not difficult, proper product and system selection can be overwhelming without an introduction to the basics. The non-professional installer simply squirts red goop from a caulk tube, smears it around a penetration, and moves on. The professional takes care to restore a barrier back to its original rating as though there had never been an opening there in the first place. You have been asked to watch these tapes to help provide the very basic knowledge needed to install Firestop correctly. This tape, Firestop Fundamentals, provides the big picture, while each tape that follows will examine more specialized topics in greater detail. During the design of a building, a three-part goal for fire safety is built into the plans. While those trained in the science of fire protection may take this for granted, a basic review of these three objectives helps put Firestop into the proper context for the rest of us. The first and most important objective is prevention. Fire drills, proper storage of flammable materials, and limiting ignition sources are examples of prevention practices that we're all familiar with. There are three components necessary for combustion, fuel, ignition, and oxygen. Remove any one and combustion ends. Since eliminating oxygen would be impractical, all efforts at prevention focus instead on limiting combustibles and controlling the sources of ignition. Yet despite these efforts, thousands of fires erupt every year, calling the second principle of fire protection into action. Known as active suppression, this principle is dedicated to quickly putting these fires out, preventing them from spreading, and limiting harm to occupants and property. Examples of these include the use of fire extinguishers, automatic fire sprinklers, special extinguishing systems, and even the firefighters themselves each attempting to put the fire out. Unfortunately, Active suppression has its limits, as precious time is consumed while firefighters travel to a fire. Extinguishers also have limitations, as they're not always located where they're needed, depend on a human element during an emergency, and have a limited supply of agent. Even automatic sprinkler systems, which have done much to improve the fire safety statistics in this country, are susceptible to impairment and do little to stop smoke. Add to this the periodic downtime for system maintenance or the potential during an emergency for inadequate water pressure, and it becomes obvious that sprinklers are only one part of a complete fire protection plan. In a natural disaster, lab gas, water, and natural gas lines may be ruptured, triggering not only fires, but disrupting the supply of water, rendering an automatic sprinkler system useless. The third and final goal is passive containment, sometimes known as compartmentation. It's intended as a last resort should both prevention and suppression fail. Passive containment is accomplished by dividing building space into smaller compartments that are designed to minimize the spread of smoke and fire. These compartments will neither prevent nor suppress a fire, but will contain it to prevent horizontal or vertical spread of flames, heat, smoke, and toxic gases. This three-tier redundant approach to fire protection is designed to improve the odds for life safety and the protection of property. The NFPA Life Safety Code and all model building codes in North America mandate compartmentation in healthcare facilities due to the need for defending in place in a fire. A compartment is like a box made up of a floor, walls, and a ceiling. Each side of the box is known as a fire or smoke barrier. A smoke barrier is defined by the Life Safety Code as a continuous fire rated wall that extends from exterior wall to exterior wall and floor to floor. B 
Be careful, however, because some local authorities having jurisdiction may define smoke barriers differently. A fire barrier, by contrast, is simply a wall or floor designed to prevent the products of combustion from spreading vertically or horizontally for a specific amount of time and is tested by a third-party lab to specific ASTM test standards. For these fire barriers to withstand such forces, they must be constructed from non-combustible building materials that are strong enough to survive the enormous heat, pressure, and destructive forces of both the UL test standards as well as real fires. Obviously, a fire compartment would be useless without openings to permit access for occupants, freight, and building services. For this reason, openings and barriers are a necessary evil, which presents a real problem. Besides being a very serious code violation, a smoke or fire barrier with a hole in it offers no protection. Fire doors and smoke or fire dampers are two examples of devices designed to restore a barrier to its original rating. These specialized devices will close automatically in the presence of smoke and or elevated temperatures and restore the compartmentation that was lost because of a door or duct opening. This brings us to fire stop, which, like fire doors and dampers, is designed to restore the hourly fire rating that was lost when an opening was created in a smoke or fire barrier. The similarities, however, end there. Doors and dampers, for example, are all installed by a single craft, each of whom are trained in their proper and safe installation. Fire stop, by contrast, is installed by nearly every craft because pipe, duct, conduit, cable tray, sleeves, and an infinite number of other service items all need to penetrate barriers. Because the work done by various sub-trades usually follow other crafts, these trades are often faced with fire stopping penetrations as well and rarely with adequate training. Regardless who does the work, compartmentation depends upon two things. First, that all penetrations are sealed, and second, that they are all sealed correctly. Each of the videotapes that follow in this series provide greater detail about the mechanics of installing fire stop properly and will help you address most any opening in a smoke or fire barrier.